Hi, this is Dicky from Hair Rules, hair care and styling solutions for a multi-textual world. I wanted to bring this narrative to this space as long overdue. We're in our 10 year anniversary and I just wanted to remind you that Hair Rules came out the gate, one brand for all textures. In 2007 and prior to that, in 2003, I authored Hair Rules, the ultimate hair care guide for women with kinky, curly, wavy hair. We didn't morph into my least favorite empty term, multicultural market, or try to get market share into the natural hair community. No, I created a new category in beauty that was inclusive, that didn't exist. It was about texture, a more customized texture-specific approach, not ethnic, which is such an archaic and narrow, divisive approach to beauty. And let me remind you that the products didn't spearhead the natural hair community. We the people spoke, meaning women. Women whose hair texture from kinky to curly, whose texture had been the most neglected by both manufacturers of hair products and retailers who dictated how you shopped and what you shopped for. You shop down the non-ethnic aisle. You shop down the ethnic aisle in the back. Oh, and hairstylists who only knew what they knew. But the World Wide Web was where the community really came together in the late 1990s. Remember chat rooms like the Long Hair Care Forum and sites like NaturallyCurly.com? To share stories about our hair, that it's not bad, it's not unruly, it's not unprofessional, it's not unkept, it's not unclean. Stories that help to debunk myths and mockery surrounding their natural beauty. Speaking of natural beauty, let me remind you that this is not the first natural hair movement, but the second. The first natural hair movement was in the late 60s to the 70s, and that was out of a fight for civil rights for black folk and other people of color. And hair was a symbol for something much greater than one's vanity. It was all about black pride and black beauty. And out of that pride, there was a lot of attention given to one celebrating the enormity of one's fro, right? So remember, no one wore a smashed, lopsided fro. If anything, you padded for shape. You never shrunk your afro. You never let it get shrunk. My favorite was to get my hair braided and take it down in a few days and pow, I had this enormous red fro. I mean, it, it, it gave me such dignity. I had this ginormous fro. Well, I had. It's, it's gone. Anyways. At night, you plaited it up and picked it out the next day with your, with your cake cutter. Oh, and ladies, everyone knew the Sunday ritual, which was church hair. Uh, Saturday night was a press and comb in the kitchen on the stove, press and curl, dress it up. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. No one had heat damaged afros. Heat doesn't damage hair, people damage hair. Let's say it together. Heat doesn't damage hair, people damage hair. No issues with heat damage was also partly due to the lack of folk simply were not running to an assimilate to a European aesthetic of straight hair or beauty that was not trendy. We were. And remember when you got your hair braided? And I mean beautiful, elaborate braided looks with beads even on long, kinky hair. You never wore those braids for longer than a week because you got talked about if you had fuzzy, funky, messy looking braids with beads missing. You also never sat between no one's legs for five and 10 hours getting your hair braided like you do now. It was not that serious. But then came the 80s. Money, 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 money for the love of money. Now, some might argue through affirmative action, people of color and women could get a higher education and move into the booming era of corporate America. And a housewife or a single mother is not about to risk all that hard work, show up at her new conservative corporate position with fight the power hair, or better yet, a Sunday press with humidity and 60% chance of rain. She's not gonna show up looking crazy. She's just not gonna do it. So relaxers became way more convenient for uh, textures that were deemed problematic. Uh, every four to six weeks, now that bad texture rears its little head and ooh, the truth is popping out. Change it, go change it, the truth, the truth. We can't let them see the truth. Now remember, women are now not only career women, but they're mothers and wives and doing the damn thing. So they no longer have the luxury or time to put into the work of their daughter's hair that they used to get as a little girl. And they're putting in relaxer kitty perms, mild relaxers at the age of five or seven years of age. More than a few generations have grown up believing something bad about their hair texture, their natural texture. Catch that, that psychological seed that's being planted. That which is yours is bad and not good. By now, weaves have moved into the late 80s and the era of weaves and micro braids, where now you can put your natural hair away entirely like a forgotten stepchild and introducing Willie Quick Weave. Now this is where the industry gatekeepers like hairstylists 
made a successful career out of using your hair as an anchor for something else. Or remember sitting 10 hours, maybe 15, to get your hair, your braids put in, and there was no way you were taking those braids out in under two to three months. And you might just get a relaxer touch up while you had the weave in your hair. And that's okay, but you're scalping your hair, looking at you like, until you do right by me, everything you do is gonna fail. And this is where we first started to hear terms like no edges, dermatitis, hair loss. And ooh, girl, that stress spot in the back. Ooh, every time you part, I can't, mm, I just didn't grow, it don't grow right there. Okay, but not to mention prior to having an aisle in the back of the hair section that was just sad, we used to have a dusty old shelf in some random drugstore with all the usual suspects. Ultra Sheen, Royal Crown, uh, Vitapoint, Sulfurate. Oh, and I can remember the day when Ultra Sheen came out with a new color grease. It went from blue to green. My point is, we were now introduced into the ethnic aisle category, the aisle that came about repackaging or remarketing the same stuff that was in the predominantly white aisle and moved into the ethnic aisle with more home box perms and grease, stay soft roll, mo curl activated, the same lathering shampoos that work great for straight, flat, oily textures, the need and volume. Right? So now with that complicates matters even worse is the cosmetology industry, the gatekeepers, hairstylists. It wasn't until the late 1990s like Diane Carroll Bailey, Diane DaCosta, who contributed to a new textbook approach to natural hair, which as a professional, if you didn't or you don't have natural hair or it's simply not on your radar, which most don't, there's no mention of the word kinky curly in your textbook across the globe. For anyone who wanted to go to school to get a license to do hair, your hair texture is not mentioned. It's kind of like American history void of African American history. Now that's gonna cause some problems for a whole lot of women, which is why it's, ve it's a very gimmick driven industry where now we all know that none of our clients are ever gonna walk out of the salon with that shit that you've seen in hair shows on their head. It's just not gonna happen. And that term I go get my hair did was because historically most women with kinky coily textures have been relegated to styles that get you from shampoo to shampoo. And you don't dare get your hair wet until the next hair appointment. And no one really talked to you about your hair beyond what you assumed was achievable. Which let's face it, are generally styles based off of the limitations of your stylist. No, I'm not bashing hairstylists or my industry. I'm simply highlighting where, without reinventing the wheel, you can make right what was wrong. You don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I love my industry, but I love women more, and I've only ever wanted to simply give women, as my sister Michaela Angela Davis puts it, I want to give women agency over their hair. That's why I opened a hair rule salon 10 years ago, which was to engage women through listening and hearing. Having a dialogue with our guests also allows for all kind of styling options without judgment. I love a weave, I love braids, I love a lace front, all that, but I really love hair care. Contrary to popular belief, kinky curly hair textures are simply the most versatile hair textures on the texture spectrum if cared for properly. So some might argue I think probably through one of the most innovative tools in learning and not only about hair care but which products are better suited to your hair is a typing system created by Andre Walker in the late 90s and it's been used throughout the natural hair community particularly online. When women search for education about their natural texture their, or their hairstylist lacked information and told her that her hair texture look, was unattractive on her and she believes she's enough. Is that okay? YouTube has been a very useful tool for women in finding videos for hairstyles and hair cares, to, uh, particularly to match like your 4C texture. Now the downside of YouTube is that it's a wild, wild west. Wakanda oil, berry juice, and nut cream do not clean, moisturize, or make for great styling options. Let's just leave that wear back there. The real value to Hair Rules texture spectrum is that it simply helps to determine what the terms like co-wash, wash and go styling and protective styling mean to your hair texture versus someone else's. So whether your texture is a one, two, three, four, remember each one of those textures has a hair type that is an A, B, or C. Um, so for instance, you can have a texture that is a four kinky and a hair type that is soft and fine, just like you can have a texture that is a one straight and a hair type that is thick and coarse or vice versa. Regardless of what your texture is, everybody's hair grows at the same rate, regardless of ethnicity or texture, when cared for properly. They all share a regiment of cleanse, condition, style, finish. For instance, where do you think the term wash and go comes from? 
your Latin girlfriends or your white girls that you've seen outside your entire life with wet curly hair and none of them are walking around with bronchitis or pneumonia. You've looked at her forever and been like, damn, she can get in the shower and redo her hair anytime she likes. Well, who knew that all the four kinky, naturally dry textures warranted that approach more than anybody's? Why? Because wash and go styling simply allows you to incorporate your entire hair care and styling routine into your shower routine. And no, I'm not suggesting that you go outside with cold in cold weather with wet hair, but it's great if it's a warmer season or you live in a, a warmer climate. Gone is the notion that you can't work out, lead an active lifestyle because you can't mess up your hair now, right? You're not running from water, you're running to water. This is where the texture spectrum comes in. Textures one through three have an issue with frizz. They can get two to three or four days out of their uh, wash and go. If you're a three C through four C, you have less of a problem with frizz and more of a problem with issue or issues with dryness, shrinkage, and definition. And if you go more than a day or two, you're actually damaging your texture because it's now drying out and your precious strands are locking up and tangling. We all know you've seen folks with locks. They're down to here, but your strands are not locks right? So your strands are these individual things that make up a coil or a curl. So you have to treat them with kindness and care and lubricate them with conditioner. Wash and go. Whenever it's convenient, you can do a wash and go styles up to as many times a day as you like. I don't know, you want to do it at night or if you don't want to do it in the morning, do it when it's convenient. That's not my business, but it's for understanding your hair texture that's most important. And let me remind you that co-washing is something that you do with water and conditioner. It's not something that you buy. This process reverses the dryness, tangles, and promotes elongation and definition in your coils and ultimately prevents breakage. This would be the opposite of what women with a hair type that's one, flat, straight, and oily textures need, which will, th that woman will fight you if you put conditioner on her hair. Her hair doesn't need to be soft and lubricated. She has no volume. It makes her already limp hair flat. Styling products with alcohol are great for her hair texture. They increase volume where there was none. Just like shampoos at Lather are a must for her oily, dull hair. Lather for threes and fours is like putting gasoline on your hair. All the threes and the fours start out with a texture that has volume, grows out healthy, and is naturally drier. These are simply the unique differences of each hair texture. Wash and go styling also helps to promote straight styling without heat damage because now you're blow drying your soft moisturized hair that doesn't need excessive heat. Heat damage comes from heat being applied to excessively dry hair that has been cared for improperly. You get bored as you should. You want to sneak down to, to get a blowout and not all hairdressers are interested in your natural texture when they're straightening it. For them the challenge is just to make sure that you get out their chair with silky hair and it's blowing in the wind wash it a week later and now it won't go back to its natural state. Three and four textures are like sponges. Take a dry sponge. You can almost, you, you can, you can almost break it, right? You add a little moisture and it goes back and forth, right? And so your hair is the same way. Moisture gives your spongy texture flexibility. I hope that makes sense. Now let me explain to you protective styling, which is a very loaded term, but gives you tons of styling options. So say for instance, last week you did a whole week's worth of wash and go styling. And this week, you know, I don't want to be bothered with wetting my hair every day. So you move into a style that will give you a week or two without having to wet your hair. A protective style can be a blowout, um, a twist out, braid out, a weave, or a wig. For every hour you or someone else spends on your hair, you should get a week out of a style, whether it's a blowout or a twist out or braids or a weave. Stylists have no business taking longer than four hours, maybe sometimes five. One month is about as long as your precious strands and your scalp can sustain that amount of stress and neglect before they start to bite back in the form of hair loss and breakage. You no longer have a protective style. Now you're busted and neither you nor your hairstylist can be trusted with your crowning glory. You've seen those women on YouTube that look like you and they're doing all these cute styles and twist outs on wet hair and you're a four texture and you go try the same cute step by step style and it just doesn't yield the same results. Aha! 
that's because she has a looser, finer, softer texture than that it's not going to draw up and dry out. So if you're a tighter course 4B, 4C, and you meet her where she is by putting a golf ball size amount of leave-in conditioner, all your favorite fatty oils like coconut, shea, butter, etc., etc., and blow out with a comb attachment and deep, gently detangle your strands. And now you're also stretching your strands and giving yourself a conditioning treatment. You're also stretching out your strands so you have a base for a protective style or a weave or braids or a top knot for instance. And then you can switch it up kind of every day without the fear of anything happening to your hair. It's about understanding your hair texture. I hope this helps you have a better understanding about how to have a better hair day and at least you're more hopeful than you were before taking the time to listen to me. And may your good hair days outweigh all your bad hair days.